Hello everybody and welcome to this video about the soldering pen. Today I'm going to show you the finished product and the packaging. One of the last things we actually normally get to do is the packaging. I was so lucky to find these boxes here. So it's a nice plastic box. Everything will fit nicely in there. Not too much room to move around. So this is a get, uh, the thing you will get if you get the full kit. And you can see the, the tip is also in here. I will probably package it with some some foam, styrofoam in to protect the tip during travel. You can see the base the base of the stand. I'm using M8 nuts to get the weight up. So let's have a look at it, what's inside. Yeah, and sorry about the the glare and the and the plastic will go away as soon as we open this. Yeah and the other nice thing is that when you as assemble this You'll have a nice box for components or spare tips. So what's in this box? Well, there's, of course, the pen itself. Let's set that aside. And there's also the tip. We'll get back to this. So let's put this here. Since we got a magnet, I have attached all the screws to this, so they're secure during travel. And we got two 20 millimeter screws these are M3, and we have four 10 millimeter screws, also M3. And the reason I use Phillips screws here is I simply ran out of hexagonal screws. These are hexagonal. I did shoot a video of how to assemble this. These are all 3D printed, so very nice and easy to get but get by. I made a nice video about, so I, I thought I could make a time lapse about showing how to put these nuts in and super glue them but apparently my webcam thought otherwise so I ended up having a video with 1.5 frames per second so that was no good I'm trying now again so this is the base of the stand it's good way feel to it the next part is I don't know what you can call it it's uh, the angle part we have two m3 nuts pressed into this so this will go here, and we'll do that. We will need two tools to assemble this. One is this hex screw, 2.5 millimeters, and a Phillips screwdriver. So we'll take two 10 millimeter screws, put them in here, first one in here. And since we got the nut, we can just tighten this not over tighten, of course, it is 3D printed plastic after all, but it will, you can do it nice and tight fit. The next thing is the, yeah, they don't have names, these parts, so, but this is where the, the tip is gonna go, so it's slightly conical. And I have already tested this conical part, it doesn't get hot when the tip is at working temperature, so you can actually touch this. So that's why I'm confident that this stand will also work, so the, the conical part is having a nice fit in here. Also this attached attached with the two 10 millimeter screws. And now this part doesn't have, I should have made nut traps here, but this is still a prototype, right? So I made the hole slightly smaller and then we can just be sure not to over tighten them. Like this. And the bottom screw as well. This is also the 10 millimeter screws. Yeah, I actually did over time that one a bit. Yeah. And this is the last part here. We got the magnet. This is a 10 millimeter in, uh, in diameter neod neodym magnet. Got two holes here. And I've used a tap like this M3 tap to get the threading in this. So deliberately printed this a bit too small and then made the threading using the taps. And now I was stupid. So no, the 20, 20 millimeter screws goes in from behind here. And since we have done the threading with a tap, it goes fairly easy. So I can just do the tightening here with fingers. Well, it did on the other five I just made yesterday. So, yeah, 
Ah, stupid me. There we go. There we go. So it is plastic after all. So it's not gonna be. It cannot withstand excessive force. But if you are just a wee bit careful, you should be okay. Okay, and then we're done here. Yeah, we can get this nice feeling. So this, yeah, we've got small bits of plastic, but that's okay. So this is a finished soldering pen stand. Okay, and now there was this was the boring part. It's an important part, this stand, because the magnet will allow the pen to turn off and go into hibernation. So what you probably have been waiting for is the soldering pen itself. And the design might not be the most daring in history of soldering irons, I know, but it's working, so come on. We can insert the tip here. I don't know if you can see it. There is a 3.5 millimeter jack in here. So we insert this here and it snaps in place. We got a small light pipe uh, for the LED, RGB LED. We got two buttons and the buttons are of course also 3D printed. So inside this uh, casing here, we got the two buttons. They have a, a small base plate so they won't go out. And then we have the top here where the PCB is inserted into a small slot and the cable is going through a, a narrow hole so we can super glue this shut and have the cable relief working. And it will fit nicely in the stand. So let's power it up, shall we? Okay. And the, the other end of the cable here, you're free to do whatever you want. The red is of course 12 volts and black is ground. So you can solder whatever connects to you like to this. So I have a 12 volt output connected to the one of the video lamps. So let's see if it works together with this. Oh yeah. Let me see. I'm not sure the video will do this justice, but the blue light is pulsing slightly. You can probably see the PWM pulse. So this indicates that the system is now in hibernation. When I take it off here, it will go to red, indicating that it's heating. And now we are the rapid red blink indicates that it's too hot. Uh, it's hotter than the operating temperature. And now it's pulsating in green. So let me just put this back in hibernation here. Yeah, and the magnet is of course not strong enough to trigger the whole sensor when the pen is all askew here. So that's another hardware issue. Uh, that this could should be easily solvable by just printing another stand or actually just a top stand. I'll turn off the light on the camera top here like this. So now I can see the pulse just. Okay. So now we got green pulse. I can push push the topmost button here. And now uh, when I do that, after a second it will show you the temperature. And the temperature is shown by one red blink per hundred per one hundred degrees and one blue blink per one ten degrees. So that will mean three hundred and fifty degrees, which is the pen is set to now, will indicate will be indicated by three red blinks and five blue blinks. Let's try it out. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. And then it goes back on. So while it shows you this uh, temperature, the pen will turn off as a safety precaution. But how about adjusting, you say? Yes, we've got two buttons. So the, the bottom button next to the LED is down and the other one is of course up, makes sense. So if I press both buttons at the same time for five seconds or so, like this, this will take me to, s me to set up mode. 
which is uh, indicated by a quick green flash. Now I didn't do anything, so after five seconds it shows me the set temperature and goes back to working at that temperature. Um, let's try and set the temperature to 290 degrees. So when I go to setup mode and I press down, it will blink blue to indicate I've decreased the temperature by 10 degrees. If I pressed up, it will it would indicate it by a, a red blink. So we have to go to setup mode and press down six times. That would take me to 290 degrees. So let's do this. Setup mode. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we wait, and then the temperature is shown. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And we heat back up. So now we are at 290 degrees. And this temperature is stored in the, the microprocessor's memory in the uh, EEPROM. So whenever I turn this off and turn it back on, it will remember the last temperature it was at. The temperature can be adjusted between 40 degrees and 450 degrees. And during production, the EEPROM is, of course, empty or 0xFF. Uh, so uh, I have made a security feature that will uh, put that to 350, so the default value is 350, which should actually suit most people. If you are unsure uh, whether the temperature is correctly set, uh, you can actually power this up without the tip. So if we take the tip off and do it like this, now we are at working temperature, I'll just take the tip out. Now it will just assume, or it will try to power up the the tip that is not there. We can get the temperature, one, two, and then the nine blue blinks, which is uh, the 290 degrees, and it will try to power back up the tip. It doesn't detect that the tip is not there. That is uh, another feature for future improvements. So this is the first version that uh, will yeah, hit the market, so to speak. I have uh, made five of these and put them out to beta testers, close friends of mine. So uh, I'm waiting for their response and I already got a few things that I uh, need to change. So we can go back into setup mode like this. And we can go one, now we had 300, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And the green will indicate that we're still in setup mode. One, two, three and five blue, one, two, three, four, five. And it heats back up. Now we can reinsert the tip. There we go. So we have a slight overshoot, but that's okay for now. And I will just demonstrate that the soldering pen is indeed hot. Yes. And then we can put it in the stand. It goes into hibernation. And of course, now it's 350 degrees. It's still so hot that we can solder. My solder melts at 220 degrees. But if I wait a bit, the tip will cool off. We'll just wait a bit. So now the tip is not hot enough to melt the solar and we're still in hibernation mode. So I'll hold the solar to the tip and then release or take it out of the stand. We're heating and there we go. Very, very fast heat up. So that's it for now. The soldering pen is very much getting close to production. So leave a comment and tell me what you think about this project. Thank you. Hey, 
If you like this video, then please consider liking it, sharing it, or subscribing to my YouTube channel, so you can get the latest updates on my new videos and electronics projects. Thank you.